and welcome to the Old Farts Fix-It Corner. You guessed it, I'm the old fart. What the Fix-It Corner is all about is me sharing with you some of the tricks and the things that I learned and the experience that I got through 20 plus years in the construction business to help you fix some of the things at home and save some money by doing it yourself. So let's look at the next project. So this is what the finished product looks like in the end. And it's hinged so that we can open it up and put our windows sashes down inside. In segment two, we ended with us installing the plywood sub layer. Now, we'll move on to installing the tongue and groove lanes coating, installing electric boxes, and then finally, we will install the trim and the other finishing touches. Okay, next we're going to begin to install our tongue and groove lanes coating, and you, we'll, we'll start by putting the groove into the corner and keeping the tongue out. We always want to work uh, with the tongue on the outside edge because that's where we'll set our nails. Now I picked a piece that had some damage to the groove side to start with because it doesn't we don't need the groove and there's going to be trim in the corner that will cover any of that. My kitty cat come to help. Alright so we want to use some construction adhesive on the back of these pieces. Now we're using three quarter inch brads to nail it through this into the plywood. And again, we've cut these pieces a little short because uh, we want to be able to remove these screws and this brace at the end of the, the job after the glue has dried. So we'll start by putting some glue on the back of this. Now again, groove side towards the corner, tongue side out towards me. And then we want to make sure this is plumb. All right, now since this is getting a piece of trim in here, we can go ahead and now straight through it in the corner. And also there'll be a piece of trim across the top and across the bottom, so it could we could actually now straight through the top and the bottom the whole way across. Now as far as the middle goes, we want to come right in here. Well, it's going to be hard to do on this piece. But we want to nail through the tongue on an angle going back in this direction. Let's see if I can get it this way. There we go. All right, now we grab our next piece, put our construction adhesive on the back of it. This piece will fit into the tongue from the last piece. Get it in nice and tight. Again, we can now straighten the top and bottom. That strip is going to cover it. pieces in there and then every once in a while we'll just check this to make sure we're staying plumb as we go along so we just continue as we started if you have any problems getting the the tongue and groove locked together you can use a piece of scrap put the groove over top of the tongue 
like it would normally go, and tap on the scrap. One thing you never want to do is tap directly on this tongue, or you'll smash it, it's like almost impossible to get the next piece in. You can also come by and tap this like this to make sure that the adhesive has made contact, contact with both surfaces. Once all of this dries in 24 hours, this, con this uh, construction adhesive will be dried and virtually this top coat and this plywood will become one piece. It will become solid. Uh, so uh, that's what we're looking for. As you can see, we're moving right along. Same process over and over again. Oops. I'll make sure you get that glue off of there right away. Let's try that again. Have a little bit of trouble getting into the tongue on this one. Now, if you don't have a brad gun, the same thing could be accomplished with uh, small finish nails and a nail set. But uh, really, the way to go is with a brad gun, air brad gun. Now, about every fourth one, we're checking the plumb on it. Still running good, so we will just continue. And again, after I install three or four of them, I come back and just tap the surface. Just to make sure that that uh, cement is getting contacting both surfaces as well. You can do the same thing with a rubber mallet, but I just like using as few tools as possible. All right, same as on the other side. We're going to start here in the corner and work our way out with the, the uh, tongue sticking out and the groove into the corner. Now, when we get to the part where the hole for the box is required, I uh, measure things a little bit different. I do use the tape measure and measure from the floor get my measurement to the bottom and to the top in this case it's 18 and 3 quarters by tw and 22 and a half but then when i go to get the side measurement i will use a scrap piece of uh, the wainscoting and hook it into the tongue and groove because it's hard to estimate sometimes exactly where this tongue and groove, how it's going to fit and where to measure from. So I'll do that with the scrap piece and then I'll mark that scrap piece like that at the edge of my hole and then measure that. 
and in this case it's one and five eighths so we'll uh, go ahead and cut that piece all right this is how we're measuring and cutting uh, for the um, receptacle box so it was 18 and three quarters to the bottom of the box hole 22 and a half to the top of the box hole <laughs> and then from this side the groove side it was one and five eighths Now, we want to remember that for this particular piece, we're cutting out this side of it. So it's the uh, tongue side that we're cutting out. So we want to make sure that that's what we do. So we'll get our mark here first. Then our square mark out. This is the part we want to cut out. All right, so we get our saber saw or hand jigsaw, whichever you prefer to call it. <laughs> Make sure I'm over a hole here in my table. Pull back a little bit and we want to curve up onto that line. Turn the board around. There we go, there's our cut. So let's go see if it fits. Now before we put glue on the back of this one, we want to check and make sure that it fits like it's supposed to. And it does, so now we can go ahead and put glue on and nail it into place. All right, now the next one, it should be the same thing as far as height, 18 and 3 quarters by um, 22 and a half. But I'm going to, I'm going to again do the uh, same way of marking it. I will take my scrap piece, put the tongue and groove in, mark it on the side, and then get my measurement from there. So, this time that measurement is half an inch. So, 18 and 3 quarters, 22 and a half, half an inch in. And it's basically the same thing for this other side, only we want to make sure that we cut out of the groove side this time. So, it'll be the same measurement, top and bottom. So, it's 18 and 3 quarters, 22 and a half. And then we found that it was a half inch coming in this way. So we want to come in a half an inch. Just like that. This time we're cutting out this part right here. 
on the groove side. So again, take our saber saw. Cut straight in. On the top and bottom mark. And then we back off and come in and curve into this line. Cut up that side, turn my board around, makes it easier for me. And we'll cut in like that and there we are, we're all done. Now let's go see if this one fits. All right, then just like the last piece, before we put glue on, we want to check and check to make sure our fit is good. And it seems like we might be a little tight. So I'm going to go and trim a little bit off of this uh, top or bottom just to uh, make sure it fits the same as the other side. All right. There we go, that'll work. Uh, it was only the thickness of a saw blade, but that can make a difference when we go to install our box for our receptacle. So uh, I'd rather take care of it now than take care of it later. And also, uh, one of the things I like to do, and I'm going to show you that next, is go ahead and install the, the box so that if there are any problems, we can take care of them before the glue dries. Once the glue dries, we're locked in. All right, now these are what Lowe's calls old work boxes. They're de designed, you have to cut the hole pretty close, and then when you put, put it in the hole and you turn the screw, these arms flip up. And then they squeeze the certain, you know, the whatever material you're putting it in, they uh, sandwich it and put pressure on it and hold the box in place. Now both of our uh, wires are coming up from the bottom so I'm gonna oh, just kind of stick my screwdriver in here and take a little pressure off of those and then I like to loosen these up a little bit to make sure they're gonna drop all the way past uh, the inside surface of the material. So that's done. All right, now we'll take and feed our wires in. See me bend it like that, that's so you get a little curve on this. So it'll come out of the box rather than just trying to continue to hit into the end of the box.
little tight. But hopefully, there we go. We got it in. Pull your wires up. And tighten up your screws. You can feel when it starts to get snug, you don't want to really bear down on it because you don't want to, it's only plastic. You don't want to break anything, but you want to get it snug. Same way on the bottom. Get it snug and there you go. You're good. Time to move on. So now that we've installed all the wood and we've given uh, at least 24 hours for the glue to set up and dry, we can go ahead and remove these temporary braces that were holding the plywood stiff. And being a thrifty guy I am, I will save the screws. Now I just want to smooth off this plywood a little bit, uh, get rid of any splinters that might have occurred from um, putting the screws into that temporary board and uh, just smooth it off and make it fine. So I'm going to take a belt sander with a coarse uh, paper on it, probably uh, I think it's like 50 or 60 grit, and I'm just going to go over it real quick. Okay, now on this top trim piece, I'm going to use a little uh, glue adhesive and also one and a quarter inch brad nails to hold it in. And I'm going to run this bead near what I believe is the top of the trim piece so that we don't get any smear down on our panels. However, if we do get a little bit of smear, this type of adhesive uh, can be cleaned up with a wet rag as long as it hasn't dried. This is just to help hold everything a little stiffer. Again, we're trying to add strength to this top edge. Now, since I'm working by myself, I'm going to use a clamp to try to help it hold it somewhat in place uh, while I come along and nail it. I'm actually going to set it in here higher than what it's going to be at the end and clamp it there. And then I'll come back and lower it uh, as I need to. All right. Now, there's a one by shelf that's going to be level with the top of this and sit on top of that. So I have a piece of a one by three quarter inch. Uh, that I'm going to use as a helper to get my level from that surface. I'll start over here in the corner and I'll get my level mark by laying that on there 
and then setting the level, my torpedo level, across like that. Bring it down till it's level, like so. Now I'm going to come all the way out to where my clamp is. And that'll be the next spot that I work on. Release my clamp. Once I get a level, then go ahead and nail it. Just like that. All right. And then I'll just work it along out to the end and back this way and put a nail about every oh, 12, 14 inches just to keep it uh, good and solid. And that's all there is to it. All done. After installing the top trim board, uh, then we're going to uh, install baseboard. Now, you'll notice on the end of this, I cut a 45 to go uh, where the two will meet in the middle because this board's not long enough to go the whole way. I always take them and put a little bit of my stain on there just to help uh, cover the, the seam. Uh, having something white show through doesn't work. So anyhow, uh, to keep with the rustic look, this is just one by that I've ripped down to two and a half inches wide, and that's what we're gonna use for our baseboard. Again, because we're going with the rustic look, we're not worried about mitering our corners. As a matter of fact, we don't wanna miter our corners because that uh, keeps with the rustic look. <laughs> so I'm gonna use one and a quarter inch brads at the top. And then I have my other gun set up with two inch finish nails for the bottom. I just don't want long nails ending up shooting through. Switch guns right now, pull pressure in. Change guns and go back across the top. All right, like I mentioned, uh, our corners are just butting against the corner because of the rustic look. But our butt seams are where we meet in the middle. We are 45ing it 
because it helps to hide the butt seam and it just makes for a better looking job. So there you go, that's what it looks like. Again, we'll put the stain on it so that the colors will match. And I'm going to put my butt seam together first. And just like before, I'll come back across the top with one and a quarter uh, brads. Just do not want any nails sticking inside since I'm going to be dropping my windows down in here. Next thing on our agenda will be to uh, cut and install a piece, a square piece in the corner. Okay, so we measured and cut this corner piece. It's just a square corner piece because our uh, lids or our shelves, whatever you want to call them, will butt right there. And so we just don't want to have to deal with mitering and trying to hinge and everything in the corner. So we're just going to square it off. I put it in here and uh, I've shimmed it up so that it's level and I'm going to use one and a half inch finishing nails to install it. It feels a little high here so I'm going to hold down on it when I nail it. And that should take care of it. Couldn't go anywhere. So after we've installed it, we just take a utility knife and score our shim right here at the edge, like so, and then snap it off. Just like that, nice and clean. Alright, now once we have the top trim and the baseboard, the bottom trim in place, we're going to put trim on the inside corner here. Now you notice that one is wider than the other one. And the reason for that is, is because the wide one will go on first and then this one will go against it and we want the reveal to be about the same uh, what you see in the front. And so that's the reason for the difference in width. So we install the wide one first. And by the way, the difference in the width is the thickness of the one body. Then you can use a rubber mallet or you could use a uh, block of wood with a hammer. I'm actually keeping this piece out a little bit from this back wall because I cheated. Uh, the scrap that I had left over to make this piece out of wasn't quite 
as wide as I need it to be. But this isn't going to matter because when we put this piece in, it'll cover that gap. All right, that's what we need. So we're going to go ahead and shoot that. Again, we're using those one and a quarter inch nails so that it doesn't come through on the inside of this. Now we put our other piece in. Side corner is trimmed. Okay, now it's time to get a measurement for our top board. So we're just going to butt it right up against the uh, corner piece that we put in. And we'll measure out to the end, which is 111 and three quarters. Now we're going to take about three sixteenths off of that so that we have a little bit of gap at each end. So I'm actually going to make it uh, 1 11 and 5 eighths. Alright, this is how we install this top board. We're going to uh, screw our hinges on top. My son Nathan is here helping me. And we'll start out by putting one right here. Alright, Nathan, it's the right hole. All right, these boards are a little over nine foot long. Uh, to get the location of the center two hinges, we're going to measure from end of hinge to end of hinge, which is 105 inches, and we'll divide that by three, and then that will be our space in between, because we have three spaces in between hinges. So that gives us approximately 35 inch space in between hinges. Now the only other thing we other thing that we want to make sure is that our hinge doesn't fall on one of these panels because the uh, it'll end up binding against the panel. So see we're 35 brings us on this one. Whoops. All right, 35 is right here, so we're just going to move it over to this spot here.
All right, 35 ends up right about the middle. Either way here. I think we're just going to move it to, uh, and then we'll move it to this side of this panel. By the way, we're using two and a half inch hinges. And we're using the screws that they provided with the hinges on the two ends. And then we purchased some longer screws to use in the center of each hinge. And that's the way it goes, just like that. Next step is to uh, put all these hinges down this way, and set them in, set it up here, and then we're going to start at one end and drill it, and screw it, and work our way across. Now we want to keep this up so that the the bar on the hinge is, let's see, make sure you're not, if you've got enough space there. Yeah, you're way, way too far over this way. Okay. Right there is working. Yeah, you want to have about an eighth of an inch in between it. Okay, the bar on the hinge needs to be level with the top. work our way across and put one screw in each hinge so that we can get it set up where we want and then we'll go back and put in the rest of the screws. Just going to work our way across each hinge. All right, come over here to our next hinge. Pull away from it a little bit. It's falling. the next one. Finally the last one. Now we just go across and draw all our holes and fill in the remainder screws.
Now for the rest of these screws, we'll probably use a drill to run them in because they get, it gets pretty hard after a while, especially the long screws. project. All right, now we'll just go ahead and do the rest of them in the room, the same way. So here we are, all finished and getting ready for Christmas. Looks pretty good. Kitty likes it. So I wanted to give you a comparison. These are the windows in, and the rest of it we've removed the window sashes for the screened in effect. As you can see, taking the sashes out really opens it up. And it gives us the screened in porch filling. And then here are the window sashes tucked into their little cubby holes so there you have it the convertible porch we took a typical porch and made it enclosed and heated for the winter and a bug free open space for the rest of the year I hope this gave you some ideas for your own place and helps you to make it more uh, usable and, and comfortable and, and enjoyable. Well, till next time, I pray God's mighty blessing on you and yours.